Nick here from Pragmatic Works, coming at you with another Azure Everyday video. As you can see, I'm out here enjoying the beautiful weather, weather out here in Jacksonville, Florida at Pragmatic Works HQ. So what I want to talk about today is the idea of using implicit actions within Power BI. What I mean by implicit is basically Power BI does a lot of stuff for us. It does things like um, it gives us implicit measures. These implicit measures that are available are stuff like auto aggregated values, such as if you have a sales column in any kind of data table, you would have that, that column would be automatically aggregated, summed up, uh, whatever it may be. Power BI does this by default and it's really helpful a lot of the times, but sometimes it's not. And the idea is you want to use implicit actions as little as possible. Now, this doesn't just come, come about when we're talking about uh, measures and whatnot. We also we, we want to create explicit measures as much as possible by creating actually a new calculated measure to accomplish this. Um, that's this way, this measure that you're creating is always going to be an addition or always going to be an average or a min or a max or a count. It's never going to be anything else, right? That's one type of implicit action I'm talking about that Power BI does for us automatically. Another thing that happens implicitly for us is relationships. Now, using these implicit relationships are totally fine, but we always want to double check them and make sure they're behaving exactly as we intend. Another, another thing while we're on the subject of relationships is this isn't necessarily an implicit action in and of itself because it has to be enabled, but there's something called bidirectional relationships uh, in your actual data model. What a bidirectional, bidirectional relationship allows you to do is it is able to have tables filter each other down. So if you have your fact and you have a dimension, your dimension typically always filters down your fact table. But if you enable the bidirectional feature of it, you can actually turn this relationship to where the fact can also filter the dimension. Now this is helpful when you're trying to aggregate across multiple dimensions or many to many type of support is what it's called. Because let's say you wanna do a count of customers that purchased a product on uh, any given day, right? So you would want a day to be your dimension and your aggregation would be a count of customers from the customer table. So it would go from dimension to fact to dimension so you need that bidirectional relationship to be able to cause that filtering to happen. Now there is an implicit action that is implied with this. When you're allowing this to interaction to happen, you're implicitly saying that, okay, any time any filter comes from the fact table, filter down the dimension. Now, oftentimes this causes problems when you're talking about stuff like date tables. As soon as you enable bidirectional filtering to a date table and it gets filtered down from that bidirectional relationship, then all of a sudden, all your time intelligence breaks, okay? So instead of using bidirectional relationships, there's many different ways, many different cons of doing it. There's some pros too, but instead of doing bidirectional relationships and allowing implicit filtering through the relationship no matter what, try to actually create any kind of aggregations that you're trying to do, like count a customer as a measure, instead of doing it across the entire table. And in this measure, you can utilize the calculate function to create your own type of uh, filtering that's allowed. So with this measure, essentially what you could do is you you calculate, count a customer, but what you do is you put a filter in that calculate function to allow filtering to come from the internet sales table strictly for count of customer or count of customer or count of date or whatever it may be. And then at that point, it's not going to cause a bidirectional relationship to happen. It's like a temporary uh, allow filtering from one table to another, and that's it. Anyways, uh, the moral of the story is avoid implicit types of actions to happen as much as possible. This way, uh, you'll know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. You're going to be explicitly de defining things so nothing ends up, ends up surprising you in your data model, like when something breaks, like your time intelligence, for instance. That's it. If you'd like more tips and trips or would like to know any more updates about Power BI or anything Azure related, be sure to follow me on Twitter. It's at Back to SQL. See you then. <music>